Hello uh, and uh, welcome to uh, the fourth lecture of this module and uh, we have been discussing uh, classical lamination theory. So, we will continue the classical lamination theory discussion. Uh, in the last class, uh, we have discussed uh, the classical lamination theory and in details we have discussed the assumptions which have been made in classical lamination theory, mainly the assumptions on displacement field, assumptions on uh, strain displacement relationship, assumption on stress strain relationship and uh, based on those assumptions, uh, we obtained the so called uh, constitutive equation for a laminated plate and we have derived the constitutive equation for constitutive equation for a laminate we have obtained the starting with the assumptions of the classical lamination theory then using the stress strain relationship strain displacement relationship we have obtained this we have obtained this n m is equal to a b b d epsilon not and k this is in the short form actually this n consists of uh, this is i think this was equation number uh, maybe this was equation number 16 so uh, so in this actually uh, n stands for the in plane forces which is actually n x n y n x y okay then m stands for the moment resultant that is m x m y m x y okay and epsilon naught is the in plane mid surface strains which is epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught and k is k x k y k x y okay and uh, we also discussed that this force resultant is actually a uh, force per unit length therefore it is force per unit length say newton per meter similarly the moment resultants were moment per unit length therefore newton meter per meter okay and this a is actually a 3 by 3 matrix which is defined I am just recapitulating what we have done so that we can continue uh, where we left uh, in the last class is actually q i j bar for the kth layer into z k minus z k minus 1. This is our, I think this was our equation number 17 and this is the extensional stiffness extensional stiffness matrix similarly b i j is sum over all the layers of the laminate q bar i j for the kth layer into z k square minus z k minus 1 square. I think you remember what was z k and z k minus 1. This was the distance of the top surface of the kth lamina from the reference plane is z k, distance of the bottom surface of the kth lamina 
from the reference plane was denoted by Zk minus 1. Okay. So, this was coupling we shall discuss in details uh, actually this is bending extension coupling bending extension coupling. Okay. Similarly, we had d i j is one third k is equal to 1 to n q bar i j k into z k cube minus z k minus 1 cube. This was our equation number 19. Okay. This is bending stiffness. Now, if you look, if we uh, closely, uh, if you have a, uh, if we look into the expressions for A matrix, B matrix, and D matrix, you can see one thing is very clear here. That uh, please note what are these uh, terms imply. Q bar i j is nothing but the reduced transform stiffness matrix for the kth lamina, and Z k and Z k minus already have explained. Now, this extensional stiffness matrix A actually does not depend does not depend upon the stacking sequence that means it only depends upon the layer meaning that suppose we have two laminate say Say, say 3 layer laminate 0, 45, 90. Suppose you have a say glass epoxy or graphite epoxy laminate having 3 layers with fiber orientations 0, 45, and 90. And suppose I have another laminate having the same 3 layers, but they are now stacked in a different way. Suppose 45, 0, 90, they will have same A i j. It does not depend upon the stacking sequence. You can clearly see here because what is z k minus z k minus 1? This is nothing but the thickness of kth layer, is not it? If you remember that we have a suppose this is a laminate, n layer laminate, suppose this is the mid surface, say so, this is the kth layer. Okay. So, this is z k minus 1 and this is z k. So, the difference of this is nothing but the thickness of the kth layer say t k. Therefore, the A matrix depends only on the thickness of the layer and its material property q bar. Okay. It does not depend where though that layer is actually positioned in the laminate. Therefore, it does not depend upon the stacking sequence. On the other end, these two matrices that means, the bending stiffness and the bending extension coupling stiffness depend upon depend upon the depend upon the stacking sequence meaning that for zero again taking the same example 45 90 and say 45 0 90 will have will have different d i j and b i j and it is quite clear from the expressions also because it involves z square minus z k square and uh, z cube minus z k cube therefore it is dependent on z values okay so where a particular layer is uh, situated with reference to the mid surface decides the uh, d and b matrix uh, on the other hand a matrix does not depend upon its location it is only the layers and their properties okay so now uh, 
this A B D matrix together if you look at this equation number 16, okay, they together actually define the characteristics of the laminate. Therefore, this is called constitutive equation for the laminate stiffness. Okay. Therefore, uh, if we now try to understand what exactly this A B B D matrix mean for a laminate, what exactly this A B B D matrix actually mean for a laminate, it is the constitutive relation for the laminate. But let us have a closer look at the each of these matrices. Suppose first we consider say A i j, A i j which is the extension stiffness. Okay. Okay. So, to understand what exactly A i j signifies in the behavior of the laminate, let us write this n x n y n x y is equal to a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 6 I am expanding the A i j matrix now a 2 2 a 2 6 a 6 6 into epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus I am not writing the full B matrix because our objective here is to understand A. So, B is actually again the 3 by 3 matrix I am not writing this. So, this is k x k y k x y. So, this uh, relationship you can clearly see this A matrix actually relates the in plane force resultant to the in plane strains mid surface strains. Okay. Therefore, A i j actually is responsible A matrix is responsible for in plane mid surface in plane mid surface strains produced due to force resultant. Okay. Now, uh, let us uh, have a closer look at each element of this A matrix. Okay. It has 9 elements, but since it is symmetric, it has 6 different elements A 1 1, A 2 2, A 6 6, then A 1 2, A 1 6, A 2 6. Let us try to understand what each of these actually does. Okay. So, let us see what is A 1 1. Let us see what is exactly A 1 1. If we apply only N x, suppose if we apply only N x, so let us have a closer look into each element of A matrix. That means, if we apply only N x, what will be the uh, mid surface strain along x direction is decided by A 1 1. Okay. That means, A 1 1 decides what will be the strain along x direction in plane strain in along x direction due to a load applied only in x direction normal load x direction n x produces epsilon x naught and how much uh, what will be the epsilon x naught because of n x is decided by A 1 1. Similarly, if you look at A 2 2 that decides if we apply only n y what will be the corresponding mid surface strain along y is decided by A 2 2. Therefore, this A 1 1 and A 2 2 are actually 
extension terms. Okay. Then let us uh, see what is A66. A66 is if we apply suppose only shear force N x y, what will be the corresponding in plane shear strain gamma x y naught that is decided by A66. It is quite clear from this. Okay. So, if we apply N x y, what will be gamma x y naught is actually decided by A66. Therefore, if we apply N x y, what will be the corresponding in plane shear strain gamma x y naught is decided by A66. Therefore, this is shear term. What is A12? If we apply N x, what is epsilon y naught is decided by A12 or if you consider A12 here, if we apply N y, what is epsilon x naught is decided by A12. Therefore, if we apply N x, what will be that means, we are applying a normal load along x, what will be the normal strain along y is decided by A12 or if we apply N y that means, a normal load along y what will be the strain along x is decided by A12. So, this is extension extension coupling okay. and uh, I think we all know that if we apply a stress along x that in addition to a strain along x, it also produces a strain along transverse direction because of Poisson's effect. So, that is extension extension coupling. I think we know this. Okay. Similarly, let us try to see what is A16 and A26. Okay. If we apply only an x, what will be the shear strain in the xy plane is decided by A16 or if we apply only N y, what will be the shear strain along x y plane gamma x y is decided by A 2 6. Therefore, if we apply N x that means, a normal load axial load along x direction that might produce a shear strain in the x y plane and that is decided by A 1 6. Similarly, if we apply N y that might produce a shear strain x y along in the in the x y plane gamma x y that is decided by A 2 6. So, therefore, this is shear extension coupling. Okay. So, we understood each term of the A matrix. Overall, this A matrix is known as extensional stiffness. However, within this A matrix, there are coupling between extension extension that means, given a load along x at that might produce uh, strain in y direction and vice versa that is extension extension coupling. If we apply an axial load along x direction that might uh, produce shear strain in x y plane that is because of A 1 6 and A 2 6 or if we apply a shear load n x y that might also produce normal strain along x or normal strain along y. So, this is again a 1 6 a 2 6. So, these are shear extension coupling. Okay. So, if you try to see what exactly they do a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 6, a 2 2, a 2 6, a 6 6. If we apply, if we have a lamina or a laminate, if we have a laminate suppose we apply a load n x. So, it will have extension along x direction 
say this is epsilon x naught and this is decided by a 1 1. Okay. Similarly, if we have a laminate and if we apply a load along y direction n y. So, in addition to having, so it will have strains along y direction epsilon y that is decided by a 2 2. What is a 1 2? If we apply n x that will also lead to a strain along y direction say in this case it is epsilon y because of n x and in this case it is epsilon x because of n y. So, this is decided by a 1 2 extension extension coupling. Suppose we have a laminate and it is subjected to n x okay. and because uh, under this uh, axial load n x suppose it also experiences shear deformation suppose this is gamma x y and this is decided by a 1 6. If we apply n x, what will be the shear strain x gamma x y is decided by a 1 6. Similarly, if we have a lamina a, a laminate and if it is subjected to n y and then it experiences shear strain gamma x y that is decided by a 2 6. And then if we have a laminate and which is subjected to say pure shear n x y and under this it experiences shear strain gamma x y this is decided by a 6 6. Okay. So, physically we could understand what a 1 1 a 2 2 they are pure extension stiffness okay. pure extension a 1 2 is extension extension coupling a 1 6 a 2 6 are shear extension coupling and a 6 6 is shear subjected to shear load what will be the shear strain. So, we understood the A matrix uh, in details therefore, similarly let us try to understand what is the significance of D matrix okay, which is called the bending stiffness D i j Okay. So, let us write first uh, how this D matrix actually relates the moment and curvature. So, let us write m x m y m x y is equal to I am not writing the B matrix full because our objective here is now to understand the D matrix. Therefore, I am just writing this B sorry B it is actually a 3 by 3 matrix say epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus d 1 1 d 1 2 d 1 6 d 2 2 d 2 6 d 6 6 into k x k y k x y. Okay. So, what we could clearly see is that this D matrix is responsible for producing curvature of the laminate due to the resultant moment. Okay. Therefore, this clearly shows that this D matrix which is the bending stiffness is responsible for responsible for producing curvatures due to due to moment resultants 
ok. Due to resultant moments, that means if we apply mx, my, and mxy, I, I'm sure you remember these uh, notations mx, my, mxy. If we apply those uh, bending moments, what will be the corresponding curvature of the laminate? That is decided by what is the d matrix. Now this d matrix also has uh, six terms: d11, d22, d66, d12, d16, d26. So let us try to understand the significance of each of these terms okay let us have a closer look into the individual elements individual elements of d matrix okay now you can clearly see what is d11 analogous to what we have done for a1 if we apply only mx if we apply only mx that is bending moment in the xz plane that will lead to curvature in the xz plane which is kx that is decided by the term d11 similarly if we apply only my what will be the corresponding curvature k y is decided by d 2 2. So, these are pure bending terms. Okay. What is d 6 6? If we apply a twist thing moment m x y, please go back and see that what is m x y? m x y is nothing but the twisting moment. Okay. If we apply a twisting moment m x y, what will be the twisting curvature kxy is decided by d66. Therefore, if we apply only mxy, then d66 will decide what is the corresponding twist curvature kxy. Therefore, this is the twisting term. Okay. What about d12? d12 is nothing but if we apply only mx then what will be the curvature in the y z plane that means we are actually apply a bending moment in the x y x z plane, but that leads to a curvature in the y z plane that is decided by d 1 2. Okay. Similarly, if we apply only m y that means a, cur the, a bending moment in the y z plane that might lead to a curvature in the x z plane a x that is decided by d 1 2. So, this is bending bending coupling analogous to extension extension coupling bending bending coupling. Okay. So, now let us see what is d 1 6. If we apply only m x that means, we are applying a bending moment in the x z plane that might lead to twisting curvature that is decided by d 1 6. Similarly, if we apply only m y that might lead to twisting curvature k x y decided by d 2 6. Therefore, if we apply m x that might lead to twisting curvature k x y or if we apply m y that might lead to twisting curvature k x y that is decided by d 2 6 or if we apply a twisting moment m x y that might lead to a curvature k x or if we apply twisting moment m x y that might lead to curvature k y decided by d 2 6 and d 1 6. So, these are these are nothing but bending twisting terms. Okay. These are bending twisting coupling. So, we could actually see what exactly they do just by schematics d 1 1, d 1 2, d 1 6, d 2 2, 
d 2 6 d 6 6. So, if we take a laminate this x direction if we apply m x we apply m x that is the bending moment in the x z plane it bends in the x z plane producing k x that is decided by d 1 1 d 1 1 is responsible for this. Similarly, if we take a laminate apply this is x this is y apply bending moment m y that means in the y z plane and the laminate bends in the y z plane corresponding curvature this is decided by d 2 2. So, they are bending terms. Okay. Then if we take a laminate where we have applied m x but that led to bending in the y z plane that is decided by d 1 2 or or if we apply m y if we apply m y and that led to curvature in the x z plane that is also decided by d 1 2. What is d 1 6? If we take a laminate which is subjected to m x, but it produced say twisting curvature k x y okay, that is decided by d 1 6. Similarly, if we take a laminate which is subjected to m y, but it produced a twisting curvature in the k x y that is decided by d 2 6. And if we take a laminate which is subjected to twisting moment which is subjected to twisting moment m x y and it twists okay. this is decided by d 6 6 which is pure twist. Okay. So, we could understand the each and every term how they actually contribute in the behavior of the laminate. Uh, d matrix is overall it is called bending stiffness, but within that there are couplings, coupling between bending bending that means a moment in the x z plane might produce a curvature in the y z plane and vice versa. Also a moment in the x z plane might produce a twisting curvature, a moment in the y z plane may also produce twisting curvature and vice versa therefore, there are bending twisting coupling. So, each term of this uh, d matrix contribute in the behavior of the lamina in the form of this pure bending stiffness or maybe pure twisting stiffness or bending bending or bending twisting coupling. Okay. Now, having understood this let us now have a look into the coupling stiffness matrix that is the B matrix. Okay. So, let us now look into the B matrix which is the bending extension coupling. which is the bending extension coupling. Okay. Now, let us write first that how B actually relates the N x and M x uh, sorry N and M N x N y N x y is related to now we will not write the A matrix full because we want to uh, look into the role of the B matrix. Therefore, A is epsilon x naught, epsilon y naught, gamma x y naught plus we will write the B matrix in full B 1 1, B 1 2, B 1 6, B 2 2, B 2 6, B 6 6 into k x k y k x y and m x m y m x y is equal to b 1 1 b 1 2 b 1 6 b 2 2 
b 2 6 b 6 6 into epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus I will not write the full d matrix here because we have already discussed the role of d. So, d into k x k y k x y. Okay. So, we could see that actually this b matrix in the first uh, it relates the in plane force resultant to uh, the curvature this is what it is it relates n x n y n x y to the curvature and then in the second equation it relates the moment resultant to the in plane strain. Okay. That means, this shows that B is responsible for responsible for curvatures curvatures produced by force resultants force resultants and the in plane in plane strains produced by moment resultants that is it couples this b matrix couples the in plane forces to curvatures and moments to the in plane strains and hence it is a coupling matrix hence it is bending extension coupling matrix. That means, if we have a laminate which is say loaded only by in plane loads say n x n y and n x y. So, naturally because of these in plane loads there will be in plane strains epsilon x epsilon y and gamma x y, but in addition to that it might produce curvatures in the x z and y z and twisting curvature because of the presence of B matrix. Therefore, the role of B matrix is to couple the in plane forces to the curvatures and moments to the in plane strains. That means, if we apply bending moments say m x in the x z plane in addition to producing curvatures it will also produce in plane strains like epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y because of the presence of B matrix. Therefore, it is called bending extension coupling because A is the extensional stiffness, D is the bending stiffness and B actually couples the extension and bending responses therefore, it is bending extension coupling. Now, let us have a closer look into the individual elements of this. Okay. So, uh, individual elements of this uh, B matrix let us have a closer look into individual elements of this coupling matrix B i A. So, first let us see suppose in a laminate we apply only an x that means, we apply a normal load along x direction. So, let us focus our attention to the B matrix only what B 1 1 does B 1 1 will be responsible for k x k x is the curvature in the x z plane. That means, if we apply a normal 
load along x along x n x that is an axial load that might lead to a curvature in the x z plane k x that is decided by b 1 1. Therefore, if we apply n x that might lead to curvature k x that is decided by b 1 1 okay. or or you can see here I mean if we apply only m x what will be epsilon x naught is also decided by b 1 1 or if we apply m x what will be the in plane normal strain epsilon x naught is decided by b 1 1. Okay. So, next you see what is b 2 2 analogous to this b 2 2 is if we apply n y b 2 2 decides what is k y or if we apply a moment m y in the y z plane b 2 2 decides what is epsilon y naught. Okay. Same similar uh, I mean I am not uh, again repeating the same thing. What is b 6 6? B 6 6 tells us if we apply a shear n x y okay, what will be the corresponding k x y. Okay. So, if we apply n x y B 6 6 tells us what is the twist curvature or if we apply a twisting moment m x y then what will be the in plane shear strain gamma x y. Okay. Now, what is B 1 6? B 1 6 tells us if we apply n x what will be the twisting curvature k x y. Okay. That means, if we apply n x what will be the twisting curvature k x y is decided by b 1 6 or if we apply m x what will be the in plane shear strain is given by b 1 6. Similarly, what is b 2 6? b 2 6 is if we apply n y what will be the twisting curvature k x y is decided by b 2 6 or if we apply m y bending moment in the y z plane what will be the in plane shear strain is decided by b 2 6. So, we understood that the coupling due to each term of this b matrix. So, let us see suppose this is b 1 1, b 1 2, b 1 6, say b 2 2, b 2 6, b 6 6. Okay. Now, suppose what is b 1 1 we have seen if we apply n x what is k x that means, you have a laminate okay, this is your x direction this is the y direction we apply a bending moment m x in the x z plane please you should not confuse about this m x m y. Okay, I made it clear in the last class itself m x is nothing but the bending moment in the x z plane. So, if we apply m x okay, that might lead to an extension epsilon x naught that is because of b 1 1 or if we apply n x that might lead to a bending curvature. So, both this effect is because of b 1 1. Okay. That means, n x might lead to a curvature in the x z plane that is because of b 1 1 or if you apply only m x that means, a, a bending moment in the x z plane that might lead to a normal strain along x that is decided by b 1 1. Similarly, b 1 2 suppose you have a laminate. Okay, x y z 
is y. Suppose you apply n y that might lead to a curvature in the y z plane that is decided by b 2 2. Okay. Or if we apply a bending moment in the y z plane m y that might lead to a normal strain along y direction that is also decided by b 2 2. Okay. Then b 6 6 is uh, if you have a laminate which is subjected to pure shear n x y and that might lead to a twisting of this laminate okay? that is decided by b 6 6 or if you apply a twisting moment m x y that might lead to shear strain gamma x y that is also decided by b 6 6. Okay. Then b 1 6 if you apply a normal uh, load n x that might lead to twisting curvature okay, that is decided by b 1 6. Similarly, if you apply a normal load n y that might lead to a twisting curvature that is decided by b 2 6 or if you apply a, a twisting moment that might uh, lead to uh, sorry if you apply a uh, bending moment m x that might lead, lead to in plane shear strain or vice versa. Okay. So, these are the uh, physically what each of these terms in the B matrix how they contribute for the overall laminate behavior. Okay. So, we understood role of A matrix which is extensional matrix and within A matrix there are laminar level coupling. Please try to understand there are laminar level coupling. Then we understood B mat D matrix which is the bending matrix, but within bending mat within the that matrix there may be bending twisting coupling. Okay. We also understood B matrix which is the coupling matrix and there also we understood that it is a it actually couples the in plane forces to the curvatures and the moments to the in plane strains. Okay. In general we can actually summarize that the response of a laminate by means of this ABBD matrix and this is how it is each term could be explained as we have already discussed that. Now, I am summarizing the overall ABBD matrix together. Okay. This is what it is. Okay. Each of these terms I have just individually also we have discussed. Now, this is how a ABBD matrix of a laminate actually contributes in the overall laminate behavior. Okay. Please uh, take note that this B matrix. So, this B matrix I will just uh, go back and write that this B matrix which is the bending extension coupling bending extension coupling has nothing to do with this B matrix which is the bending extension coupling has nothing to do with with the anisotropy of the constituent lamina. Okay. It is only it is only due to the unsymmetry of the stacking. Okay. 
even in a laminate in a laminate having layers of isotropic material of dissimilar isotropic material dissimilar isotropic materials stacked unsymmetrically this coupling stiffness matrix will exist okay so in general A two six, A six six, B one one, B one two, B one six, B two two, B two six, B six six, D one one, D one two, D one six, D two two, D two six, D six six. epsilon x not epsilon y not gamma x y not k x k y k x y so this is extension this is bending and this is bending extension coupling symmetric okay extension bending bending extension coupling and this bending extension coupling has nothing to do with an isotopy of the lamina okay a laminate may be made of number of layers which are all isotropic but if they are stacked unsymmetrically then they may also have p matrix what we mean is suppose if we take suppose two uh say isotopic materials aluminum and steel even uh they may also show bending suppose they, they are subjected to say for example if you remember that uh as for example the bimetallic strip bimetallic strip as temperature controller if you remember that subjected to a temperature they produce curvature because of the different uh, properties of coefficient of thermal expansion okay so and they are used as temperature controller so similarly this b matrix has nothing to do with an isotropy of the lamina but it is because of the laminate level coupling this is actually laminate level coupling due to unsymmetric stacking okay and on the other end this a16 a26 these are actually laminar level coupling a16 a26 these are lamina this a16 a26 are laminar level coupling due to an isotropy this will not be there for isotropic material you can clearly convince yourself because what is a if you remember a suppose a i j is nothing but q bar k 
k z k minus z k minus 1. Therefore, a 1 6 a 2 6 is actually decided by q 1 6 bar q 2 6 bar and if you remember for an angle lamina this q 1 6 q 2 6 were nothing but lamina level shear extension coupling. Therefore, this a 1 6 a 2 6 is because of the anisotropy and it is a lamina level coupling. On the other hand this B matrix is laminate level coupling and it has nothing to do with the anisotropy of the constituent lamina. Okay. Let us uh, see now the overall uh, picture of a laminate that we have just discussed these things in details now, but just to show the overall if we have a laminate, uh, a laminate might actually behave dependent on what are these terms of this A matrix, B matrix and D matrix. Suppose if we have a laminate where all the uh, terms are actually non-zero, okay, then it might deform in all possible, uh, I mean suppose if we have a laminate where uh, say that means for a laminate. for a laminate having all the elements of A B B D matrix as non zero that means it is fully populated suppose subjected to so only n x all other loads are 0 say suppose you have a laminate for which the ABBD matrix is fully populated, all the elements are non-zero elements, that means each of them actually contributes, suppose this is the laminate okay, and it is actually subjected to suppose a simple uniaxial load, okay. this is your x, this is y and this is z. It is subjected to only n x that will lead to, that will lead to epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y that means all the in plane strains why because a matrix is fully populated a 1 6 a 2 6 are also non zero therefore because of n x it will have epsilon x epsilon y as well as gamma x y it will also have k x k y k x y that means it will also bend in x z plane it will also bend in y z plane, it will also uh, have twisting curvature, it will also twist. Therefore, you can imagine that subjected to n x what will be the deformed shape of this laminate, okay. it is too complicated. Okay. Therefore, suppose if you want to put a laminate in UTM, you can understand subjected to uniaxial loading what will be the deformed shape. If you remember in one of the previous classes, uh, I told uh, that one of the disadvantage is mechanical characterization. Therefore, a general laminate like this it is very very difficult to I mean characterize it. Suppose if you want to find out using strain gauges the uh, the Young's modulus of this laminate it is not it is, it is difficult. Therefore, that is what exactly we mean by difficulty in mechanical characterization. Okay. So, this is uh, how a laminate which is fully populated will behave that means it will have all kinds of in plane strains as well as all kinds of curvature subjected to loads. Okay. So, uh, before we actually go more uh, into this uh, ABBD matrix, let us uh, look back how using CLT we actually analyze the laminate just in brief. So, that uh, because we have been only discussing the significance of each term. So, let us have a brief discussion on how we can actually analyze the laminate using CLT. Okay. So, uh, 
this is the laminate constitutive equations. Now, try to understand if we want to analyze what exactly our objective is. We have a laminate, okay. We have a laminate, say this is the laminate, okay. We have a laminate, and for this, what are the inputs and what are the that means this laminate is actually suppose subjected to load, maybe Nx, maybe Ny, okay, maybe Nxy, okay may be bending moment m x, m y, m x y. So, all these are uh, loads. Therefore, applied load is known. Okay. What are the applied loads? N x, N y, all may be present or only one may be present, others may be 0, but in general that means we know the applied load on the laminate okay, is known. Okay. We also know laminate details. What are those? Number of layers, okay. then material, Okay, then dimension that means thickness may be of each layer and their locations. Okay, dimensions unknown. What we need to find out that stresses. Strains to be determined. This is what exactly is the problem, just a simple problem so that we understand what we do with CLT. Okay. So, for this laminate, suppose this is the laminate, we have n layers, say for n layers for k going from 1 to n. Okay, for we know theta k, theta k is known. That means for each layer, we know what is the fiber orientation. We know what is z k and z k minus one. That means the precise location of each of these lamina is known. We know e one, e two nu 1 to g 1 to for each layer. Okay. That means, the material properties are known. If these are known, so with theta and this therefore, so these are known. Okay. Therefore, we know what is therefore, as a result of so, this along with theta k, this plus theta k, we know if you remember in your macro mechanics, we understood how to determine the reduced transform stiffness matrix for an angle lamina. So, you only need to know e 1, e 2, nu 1 to g 1 to and the fiber orientation angle theta. Therefore, we know now this q bar for each layer. So, we know z k we know z k bar, we know q bar. Therefore, this along with z k and z k minus 1, we could find out what is A matrix. We have seen this A, B and D are actually functions of q, z k and z k bar. Okay. So, we can find out that means, we know now the A B B D matrix okay, for this lamina. Therefore, for this lamina A B B D matrix, I am writing in the short form is now known, okay, is obtained. 
then once we have the ABBD matrix, what we do is now we have we know n, we know m, that means the applied load is known. Okay. How we know this? Suppose you have a laminate, suppose it is only subjected to a load along x. Okay. Therefore, this load divided by thickness will give you n. Please note that n is nothing but the load per unit length. Okay. So, from this we can find out what is n. Similarly, we can find out nx, nxy, mx, mxy like that. So, now into epsilon naught and k. So, this is known, ABBD is known, we have to find out this. Therefore, we could find out epsilon naught k just by taking inverse of this matrix. We can find out the inverse of this matrix. So, we know epsilon naught and k. Okay. If we expand this, that means now what we know is we know epsilon x naught, epsilon y naught, gamma x y naught and k x, k y, k x y is now obtained. Okay. So, we know the mid surface strains and curvature. Therefore, what we do for any layer that means for each layer we can now find out what is the strain epsilon x, epsilon y, gamma x y for the kth layer is equal to if you remember based on our displacement and strain displacement assumptions, we could express the strain in any layer as a function of the mid surface strains and curvature. Okay. So, this is what it is where, where if you see z k suppose if you this is the kth layer z k bar is the distance of the middle of the kth layer from the reference plane. Okay. So, this is now we obtain the strain in the kth layer, okay, in plane strains in the kth layer. Now, we can also see we have obtained the strain at the middle of the kth layer, we can also obtain the strains in the top and bottom surface of the kth layer. Only thing we need to know this distance. So, we know what is z k minus 1, what is z k. Therefore, within a lamina we can find out the strain at any point. Therefore, the stress in that lamina could now thus in plane stresses in the kth lamina could be obtained as q bar k into epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y k. That means, we could obtain the stress in the kth lamina k, k could be anything between 1 to n. Therefore, in all the lamina we could find out the stresses in plane stresses. Then what we do? Since we know the stresses in each lamina now, we can apply appropriate failure theory in each lamina and then decide whether the lamina is safe. If the lamina is if all the lamina is safe, the lamina is safe. I mean this is in brief uh, what we do with classical lamination theory. Okay. We have the ABBD matrix. Therefore, from the ABBD matrix we can find out the mid surface strains and curvatures. Because we know the mid surface strains and curvatures, we can find out the strains in any of these layers. And once we know the strains in these layers, multiplying by the corresponding reduced transform stiffness matrix for that layer we could find out, we could obtain the stresses in each layer. Once we obtain the stresses in each layer, we can have, we, we could actually assess whether uh, these layers are safe or fail by using apply, uh, appropriate failure theories. I will stop here today, maybe we will discuss in the next class. Okay. Thank you.